if some we're reading we read about tribulation that's coming in the end times and indeed it looks to be horrific i've tracked and written down most of what the lord said would happen to us now he specifically talked about his disciples when he said they're going to throw you into prisons right well many have been in prisons uh for the word of god right he's talking about for the word of god and he said this would happen you'd be bought before kings and you know these important people to witness against them you would be evidence of them being corrupt you would be a witness to the word of god which is very important and i think that a lot of people are not truly aware of that paradigm that's not tribulation that's an assignment that's something very different if the lord ever gives you an assignment that would cost your life he has prepared you to be very robust up until the last moment so you're going to be prepared and equipped to go through anything the lord would have you go through but he also said, a true believer, their tribulation begins long before everybody else's. Jesus said that. And he said that the those who have not accepted him, those who reject him, they have not had tribulation yet. And they must have tribulation. So the days of wrath are appointed to them when they actually say no. Now, when they actually say no, it's when they have had proof. All right. You, you can say no by faith and be forgiven. When the Lord begins to show you proof and you say, no, you have truly fallen away. And during the time when Paul was talking about there must come a falling away first. You can't fall away because you thought something was going to take place. You can't do that. When you fall away, you truly fall away. So that means there's going to be a lot of proof in the world. So you might want to buckle up for that proof. There's going to be a, a, a time when God clearly demonstrates the truth to millions of souls on the earth. You have to be ready for that. Because when this time happens, that will be the phase when people begin to truly say no. Again, many Christians have said no to the Lord and a great many things, but they did so in their ignorance because they were walking by faith, having nothing. They didn't see a thing. Remember, God held his own people accountable because they witnessed the miracles. They witnessed his power, his might, his resolve. They were direct witnesses of it. And he said, because of this, I'm going to hold you to a standard. He said that in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 11, uh, 12. All right? But for those who have not been direct witnesses, when they say no, they do so in their ignorance, which means later on they can't say yes. Because many of you said no at a specific point in your life. But then you came to your senses. The Lord really opened up your heart. You came to your senses. And then you came to the Lord, right? Well, a lot of people in the world, because of the way the world is, it's important that we see the way the world is, and look at the situation through godly eyes as, as much as we can, not through our own um, objective eyes, but through godly eyes. We're biased in a lot of ways, folks. We're very biased. And so we often look at situations based upon our experiences and our environment. It's time for us to look at the world with pure eyes, right? Pure eyes. And then if you see it that way, with pure eyes, with godly eyes, applying God's righteousness to the world, you see a very different situation. Once you understand that the world has not really seen tribulation, right? That's what the Lord said. They have not seen it. And if they have not seen tribulation, listen to me, yet they have gone through similar situations that you have gone through, then what does God define as true tribulation? See, once you find that out, you're not scared of that term anymore. You're not scared of it. Because the Lord said that a time of tribulation will come up on the earth, and he indeed described that time of tribulation. He described the heart of the tribulation, where it's going to be. He named the land the day the Lord will come upon. He did. He told us exactly what would happen. And we know by reading Revelation, there are going to be innocent bystanders, those who are grafted into the branch. They're going to be looking from afar at what happens that so deadly. We saw that. Um, when you are applying the word of truth, in righteousness, you're not looking to prove yourself right. You're looking to know the truth. Right? It's very important. For example, if I had a preconceived notion of, let's say, um, something concerning the rapture event, I'm going to mess up already. Because I'll read in support of my own ideology. Right? I can tell you something. I do not read in support of, only against my own ideologies. Those things I believe in strongly. I read the word against anything my mind would grip onto so easily. I do. I read it so I can know the truth. I'm not really interested in anything that will save my life. See, the Lord gave me a hint. He said, those who seek to save their lives, they will lose it. 